Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the Sapphire R9 Fury X. So this is AMD's most recently released flagship graphics card. And it's going to sit above the 390X, occupying that top spot in AMD's lineup. Now unlike the 300 series, the Fury X brings with it some next-gen technologies. And uh, this particular model here is designed really to go head-to-head -head with the GTX 980 Ti. And again, this card is equipped to take on high-resolution gaming. Breaking away from conventional cooling, the Fury X opts for a liquid cooling solution to deliver superior temperature figures and battle high noise levels. Fury X brings with it the much-anticipated Fiji GPU and is the first card to step away from GDDR5 and into high-bandwidth memory. Now the Fury X is priced as follows, in the UK £550, over in the States it's going to be anything upwards of the $650. So this card again is positioned in the same price range as the Nvidia GTX 980 Ti. And after this video you should be able to gauge which one to go with. Now if you want in the, uh, the full review, you know the full suite of benchmarks, please head over to the full review in the description for all the games, all the, you know, the power consumption, the temperatures and so on. Right guys, well let's start off with a quick look at the packaging. So as you can see here, this is uh, quite a large box actually for a graphics card. Uh, but you can see here we've got the Sapphire R9 Fury X. This is uh, Sapphire's gaming uh, theme here. And of course down the bottom here, fundamental features with the Fury X. This is going to be synonymous with this card. High bandwidth memory, 4K gaming, liquid VR, free sync. And of course that high bandwidth memory brings in the 4096 bit memory architecture. Over on the back uh, we've got a bit more of a rundown on those particular features. And opening that box up as you can see very much like a liquid cooler actually this uh, with the thick foam padding and of course Fury X comes with that liquid cooler so we've got the radiator configuration so that's nice to see that we've got a bit of extra protection. Anti-static bags around those as well. And then we've got some bundled accessories here so this is uh, the adapter that we get. This is a DVI to display port. And then we get the HDMI if you need that. And then we have the driver CD and then some documentation, so the installation guide and the warranty details. So here we have Fury X and as you can see it's quite a big step away from traditional graphic card design and that's because it is equipped with an all-in-one liquid cooler. And we're going to have a closer look at this cooler later on. Now the other thing that you're going to notice is the footprint. This card is smaller than other graphics cards and for a flagship it's quite a surprise. And in fact if we just measure Fury X you can see there that we have 7.5 inches for the length. That's around 19 centimeters. So quite a big difference for such a powerful GPU. And then for the other measurements we have 4 inches, 10 centimeters for the width and 1.5 inches, that's 4 centimeters for the height. So overall Fury X is quite a compact little unit and it's down to the fact that this card comes with high bandwidth memory as opposed to GDDR5. And again we're going to take a look at that GPU and HBM later on. So from a styling point of view this card is again hugely different to a card with an air cooler because we have this dotted soft touch panel on the top side which can actually be removed and replaced with your own design and it's likely that we'll get some aftermarket designs which will surface. If you've got a 3D printer you can also create your own. And around the edges here we have this black mirrored glass aluminium. And when you think about it, how components look inside a rig is actually quite important to a lot of people. So these extra touches here will contribute to a nice looking configuration. Now that Radeon logo glows red when the card has power. And along the edge there we have some additional LEDs which will light up and signal when the card is active or when it's idle. Over on the reverse we have a soft touch panel and on that side we have the serial number and some other details. We've also got that dip switch there to adjust the activity LEDs to red or blue. Looking at the rear I.O. panel on Fury X we have three display ports and one HDMI port. Those display ports are 1.2 and they allow for 4K at 60Hz while the HDMI gives us 4K at 24Hz. So by having so many ports we can project onto multiple screens but if you're going to be going for a single screen setup it's better to use that one uh, display port as it's going to give you higher refresh rate. Running on the back edge of the card we have two 8 pin PCI Express ports and AMD actually recommend a 750 watt power supply with 50 amps available for the plus 12 volt rail. And just further back there we also have another dip switch and that is for dual BIOS. So this gives us a bit of a, a fail safe option should anything go pear shaped with an overclock or a firmware update. 
Now with Fury X using a liquid cooler, we of course have a radiator supplied with the card. So this radiator is 120mm in specification and it comes with a 120mm fan as well. This fan is a Nidex servo and is the D1225C. So this fan is 120 by 25 and it delivers up to 3000 RPM but of course is configured to be PWM. So to make use of this fan and the radiator, you're going to need to have a spur 120mm mounting spot inside your case. So this could be problematic if you're using the same type of cooler for your CPU, so that's an all-in-one solution. You need to make sure that you double check the clearance and also the spec of your case. Okay, so we're now going to take a closer look at the cooling solution and we're going to check out that new GPU and its HBM configuration. So to start with, I've removed that top plate and you can see the pump there which AMD has opted for on this new graphics card. It's designed by Cooler Master. And you can see the tubes are feeding to and from that radiator. And uh, you know there are no cables to connect to your motherboard. All of this is taken care of by PCI Express. Some of you guys may be aware that AMD has had a bit of a problem with some of the pumps on Fury X. And this sample actually suffers from that noise related fault, which has been widely reported online. This pump is the first generation and it will need to be RMA'd and I'm going to show you the problem a bit later on when we get this card installed on the test rig. So I've gone ahead and I've removed all the screws off that Fury X card, detaching that back panel and the entire unit off the front section and you can see there the thermal pads there and the block which sits over the GPU. So here we have the Fury X in the flesh. This really shows how big that PCB is and highlights really the benefits that HBM brings in terms of component arrangement, keeping things nice and compact. So usually we'd have those memory chips dotted around the GPU, but all of this is now bundled with the chip. At the very heart of Fury X, we have the Fiji GPU, which is based on the 28 nanometer fabrication node. So with high bandwidth memory, that's HBM, we have 4096 bit memory interface and just 4 gig of capacity. Now compared to a flagship card with 8 gig of GDDR5, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you're going to see from the demo later on and from our full review, this is still adequate for gaming at high resolutions. So the core clock on Fury X is 1050 MHz, while the memory clock is 1000 MHz effective. Now again against other cards that doesn't sound as fast but the shader units, the pixel rate, the floating point performance make this a compute powerhouse. And Fury X is also ready for DirectX 12 and it uses PCI Express 3.0. Right guys, well I've got the card installed on the test rig and you can see that the Radeon logo is lit up and we're just going to run a quick benchmark on FIFA at 4K to give you an idea of how the card performs, how it sounds and how hot it gets. So we've got GPU Z set to report the maximum temperature there, as you can see. And we're just going to go into the settings of Thief. Just to make sure that we've got uh, the correct resolution, make sure that's full screen. And uh, we'll set this to we'll set this to high just for now. And then if we go in. Okay, and then we just hit benchmark. And if I just take my microphone off and get it close to that card and also the fan and radiator combo, you should be able to hear the noise level and also pick up on that faulty pump. The noise that comes from that pump is very high pitched and it's pretty unbearable to be honest. Okay, and there is our result. Not too shabby at all, to be honest. Quite good, that. And if we just uh, go into Windows, there is our maximum temperature, which has been reported. Just knock off that steam. Uh, there you can see it is 41 for the maximum. So that's typical gaming scenario. Really impressive, actually, you know, compared to air cooling. And that is all thanks to that liquid cooling solution. So guys, bringing our thoughts to a close on the Fury X, you know, this is without doubt AMD's most powerful single GPU on the market and it's really good to see them incorporating that new memory architecture with the HBM. 
You know, the design of this new Fiji-based card is quite obviously a contender and a direct rival to that GTX 980 Ti, and yet choosing an absolute winner is actually quite a difficult task. If you take a look at the full review over on Vortex.net, you'll see the Fury X winning certain benchmarks and then the TI taking others. And so ultimately, what it's going to boil down to is things like the cooling, the noise, the size, and so on. And actually, just speaking of uh, that cooling solution, I really like what they've done with that liquid cooler. Uh, keeps those temperatures under control extremely low, and that cooling fan there is going to emit, generate very little noise, even under full load. So, uh, you know, the whole solution is a bit of a triumph for me. It's just a bit of a shame that our retail sample today suffered from that, uh, you know, dodgy first batch of pumps. Uh, but if you guys have bought one, you're suffering the same type of experience, you know, the noise being unbearable, get in touch with them because they will RMA it. It's just a bit of a surprise that this kind of thing slips through the quality control because we're actually straight away, you know, as soon as we took it out of the packaging, started testing it, it started with that really nasty high-pitched noise. So that pretty much concludes things today, guys. Um, that covers everything. Again, if you want more detail, all the benchmarks, please head over to the link which is going to be on the screen and also in the description. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It'd be great to have you on board. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself and I'll see you guys in the next video.